Hey, before we get into it, Brisbane and uh, what was the other show that we announced? Brisbane and... Uh, 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 Oh, yeah, UK shows will be announced soon on the website. But Brisbane is on sale now, and we're selling like crazy. Uh, get your tickets to that. But Sydney, Friday and Saturday, I think it is, this uh, next weekend uh, is happening, and that's almost full, so get your tickets. Sydney's happening. Then I'm going everywhere else in the country. You can see me uh, in Albury. Uh, that's Actually, that got cancelled. Uh, Newcastle, uh, Gold Coast, Hobart, Launceston, Adelaide, Ballarat, Warrnambool, Shepparton. And then after that, we've got dates for Manchester and London. And hopefully more UK shows will be on sale soon. Loosebeers.com. Uh, also, welcome aboard to our new Patreon members, uh, Harrison, Callum, Braden, and Nick. Thank you very much. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 335 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Big news, okay? We have right here in my hands the official AFL Tasmania Devils membership that has been sent to us. This is great. We are the team, our legacy since 1866. Um, objection, 2024. Okay, I don't think any other football team is is claiming they started when the, is that when what's that date? Eighteen sixty six. Is that the fucking prison colony? When they, I I don't know if that's the date that Tasmania should be celebrating. That's when they created a prison colony on our prison colony. They should pick twenty twenty four when we started a team by charging people ten dollars to sign up digitally. First club in Queensland, 1866. Oh, okay. In Queensland? So that's yeah. a is that when AFL started? Uh yeah. But but it's got it's got our legacy and then it's got the shape of Tasmania. Can you search 1866 Tasmania? Okay. See what we find. It, was it still called Van Diemen's Land then? <laughs> you know? I feel I I just have a feeling that Tasmania doesn't have anything positive to celebrate from 1866 are you finding anything no i think it is just that the afl had a first club in 1866 or what is now known as the afl okay well i think we need to re we look i'm a big supporter of the tasmanian devils afl team in fact i'm a founding member okay and i love this team i've got this team in my blood all right i lived there for six months uh during COVID and it's in my blood and there's many people who have signed up and I feel like we can pick a different year to celebrate, you know? Um, and I, and I, and I don't think that any of those years, especially for Tasmania <laughs> should start with the numbers one, eight. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think, was there a single good day for Tasmania in the 1800s? I don't think so. I don't think there was one. I've been to Tasmania. I've done the, I've done the historical tours and uh, ever since we arrived in the 18s, we, we made a big mess and there was not much joy for anyone of any color, <laughs> but especially not the ones that weren't the right color at the time. Anyway, um, I'm loving the colors. It's got a nice, it's a nice green and yellow. We are the team. That's good because I, I assume they haven't sorted out who is the team. Uh, because we don't have a team yet. All they have, they've sold memberships. Um, Spearhead Sundays, thank you for becoming a founding Tasmania Devils member. That's great. I can't wait to go to my first game in 2057. When's the first game? When do they say? When are we playing? Because Keelan signed up. He's a member too. Predicted to be uh, 2028. 2028. This is great. I feel like I'm I'm waiting for uh, the the next Avengers movie. Uh, except every member of the Avengers is inbred and that can't play very well. Uh, so what in our membership, this is the first time I've opened it, by the way. In our membership, we've got um, a Tasmania Devils founding member sticker since 1866. Again, all right, our legacy. I mean, for fuck's sake, AFL was barely a thing in 1866. That's the first club. But was Tasmania called Tasmania in 1866? This is really upsetting me. I bet it wasn't. I bet it was Van Diemen's Land. When did we start calling it Tasmania? 1856. Okay. All right. We're making progress. That's that's not so bad. At least it was called Tasmania. Um, all right. 
What have we got here? Spearhead Sundays, thank you for being a founding Tasmania Devils member. I'll save this sticker for um, to put on my the bumper of my car. Um, there's one thing that defines this team. People. Yeah, people who pay $10 to sign up digitally online as a joke for a guy who runs a podcast in Australia. Unwavering people. Proud people. Our people. People who've spent a century always kicking into the wind. Uh, until today, when the team we were told would never, ever happen roars to life. Who told them that? Who said that? Who said we ta- we Tasmanians would never get a team? You're never going to get a team. You're Tasmanian. Um, and while the players aren't here yet, <laughs> we are. This is good. They're addressing criticism already. Uh, because there's no team without us. Uh, because we wouldn't be able to afford to pay their salaries. From the ice in our breath to the gravel in our veins, we are the team. That's good. Because Greeley told us last episode, or actually this is before we started recording, (laughs) a little bit of off-mic chat, making it to the show. Apparently every (laughs) single... There are a lot of really good AFL players that come from Tassie. Uh, They obviously won't be in this team because they've already signed contracts. Um, But apparently most... A lot of the AFL ovals are not made with grass because Tasmania's weather can't do grass. They're gravel. <laughs> and that would explain why all the Tasmanian AFL players are so good because they're doing, I don't know, what are they called? Speckies into the gravel. Imagine getting tackled and you've got to pull stones out of your knees. No wonder they all fucking leave as soon as they can. I would imagine that even when this team kicks off, which it will, and becomes the the best team in the AFL, a lot of Tasmanian players will be like, fuck, I I would rather be on the Gold Coast Suns. So at least I can get some sun on my back. And I don't have to pull stones out of my fucking knees every time I fall over. There's some more text in here, but I can't really read it without without destroying the envelope, which I don't want to do because this is, as you know, a collector's item. Um... Oh, it just says, it just keeps saying since, um, oh, this one says since, this one says 1488. That's weird. Um, huh? Yeah, it must be a typo. It says 1488. Can you Google the the significance of 1488? Is this the joke? What do you mean? It says it on Does here. It actually? It says, <laughs> it says, um, Taz, our legacy, 1488. What does that mean? Let me have a look. I can't find any. It must be a typo. Can you search what does 1488 mean? Okay. Sorry. I feel like this is a setup. <laughs> <laughs> what does it say? It just says hate symbol. <laughs> oh, right. That's weird that they would put that on here. A that must be a nationalist so- slogan. Really? Mm. Maybe they should change the name back to Van Diemen's Land. That's an interesting typo. Hopefully they'll fix that up with the next batch of... Um, of memberships. Um, but anyway, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a proud member of the Tasmanian Devils since 1866. Not the other number, you bigot. Um, now, we did miss out. I, I checked my emails and, and uh, we did miss out on ordering any um, football jumpers or singlets. They call them jumpers, but it's a singlet. Uh, they're for j- jerseys. Jerseys. Well, they're calling them jumpers, okay? And you would think that someone who lives in Tasmania would know what a fucking jumper is, but apparently they don't. And, and I missed out on spending $99 on the ugliest singlet of all time, but fuck, that would have been a good one to perform in. Maybe when I do my... Because I wanted to do my shows in the, in the fucking jumper. That would have been sick in Tasmania. Um, but I missed out because I'm unorganized. And also, I don't... I don't even really have $99 to spend on a jumper. Mm. So what I'll do is uh, in the email FAQ, they said, you need to order it by this date. And then they said, what about these 
jumpers that we're seeing pop up on all of these other websites and it says those are low quality fakes. I might just get one of those. <laughs> No, I would never. I support my team since 1866. Um, all right. So that's good. Um, I need to get a car now for my bumper sticker. Um, dude, Keelan sent me the funniest the funniest news article today <laughs> about this, uh, this cat. <laughs> so this couple <laughs> orders something off Amazon and they go, oh, I don't want that. Oh, this, is, this is what I wanted. I'm going to return it. They package it up. They leave it on the porch to be returned. Unbeknownst to them, their cat snuck into the box and somehow they packaged it up without noticing. And the Amazon driver picked it up, didn't notice the cat was in there. And the cat just had been shipped to the return center for what was it? Four days? Yeah. <laughs> it was just living in a box getting shipped all around an Amazon warehouse by robots for four days until someone was like, what's that meowing noise? Opened it up and it's alive. Accidentally mailed from Utah to California. <laughs> Man, I, you, the cat's so lucky that it didn't freeze or cook. You know, you'd think that it'd be, it'd be at points unbelievably freezing cold and then other points, very hot. The cat was rescued by an Amazon worker nearly a week after she jumped into the package undetected. A week? She was in good health, despite having no food or water for days. That box would have been full of shit and piss. <laughs> the Amazon right? worker took the cat to the vet where her microchip was scanned, allowing her to be reunited. Imagine that phone call. Yeah, because you would think that your cat is lost like you like if i if that happened to my cat i would assume it's somewhere in the neighborhood <laughs> and then you'd find that it's in fucking utah it comes back wearing a cowboy hat and, and is like i reckon we should get rid of immigrants and you know you've got a californian cat it comes back hating immigrants that's not on you can't have that that's so funny so was it just meowing in the box I don't know, <laughs> but the cat looks like a fucking idiot. The cat looks really stupid. Give me a look at this dumb cat. Yeah, yeah, that's an idiot. That's a cat who's seen some shit. <laughs> that, I've, that cat's facial expression, that, that, that looks like um, when someone from California goes to Utah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? People are like this for real? <laughs> I just imagine that the, the Amazon worker opened the box and found the cat. Yeah, that is um, that is crazy, and um, like the the experience of that a week in a box, just it must have just been living off its own piss. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna look it up on on something. Hang on. Yeah, I want to know more information about this this cat that got delivered. I mean, I think that's like a that's a really good um mark for uh, Amazon. You know, that's how well they treat your packages is that your cat can get shipped over the span of a week and it stays alive, you know? Like no one's thrown it. No one chucked it on the bottom of a pile and then put a fridge on top of it. It's all good. Because I think that's the... Thank God that we haven't gone fully 100% automated. Because if it was just robots in Amazon's facility, like they're trying to make it, I think it's like 95% robots, it just would have been passed around and then they'd be like, life form detected, they would have just executed it. Earlier this month in Utah, a shy six-year-old indoor cat named Glena. Oh, it's an indoor cat too. That <laughs> It'd be like, what the fuck? I'm never leaving the house again. Vanished from her home. <laughs> The owners put up flyers, contacted friends and family to help search. They eventually ended up searching their area and get, uh, they gave up until their microchip. Fuck, imagine the in the house. I told you, st you always leave the fucking window open. I didn't leave the window open. You must have left the back door open. No, she would have slipped out when you went to work. You know, they're just, it's ruining their relationship, blaming each other. Maybe one, you know what? Maybe once one of them was like, 
did you do, do you think you could have shipped her in a package? Oh, I'm not a fucking idiot, Steve. <laughs> I wouldn't have shipped a fucking cat in a box. You think I'm a retard? After a phone call with a vet in LA, the Clarks finally pieced together how Galena got in there. Wait, in LA? So Utah to California or California the to- Utah to California. Oh, okay. I got it backwards. Whatever. He's like... It's like a thousand kilometers. The cat was like, oh, I hate immigrants. And then it started seeing them and realized they were people. It was like, oh my God. All right. <laughs> that's, that's the new joke. Just pretend I said that the whole time. It turns out... <laughs> it turns out Galena loved playing in cardboard boxes. So when the Clarks had some work boots to return, the Amazon package was an enticing playground for her. Oh my God. It was, it was, it was bouncing around there with some fucking work boots. <laughs> Just like a cat and boots and shit and piss just bouncing around. This cat just spent a whole week getting booted in the head. Matt Clark, the owner, had no idea his beloved cat was trapped inside the box. I don't believe that. On the other end of the delivery in Los Angeles, a Amazon warehouse worker named Brandy discovered Galena and took her in. How true is that? How true do you reckon? I don't think I could not notice that my cat... <laughs> Is in the fucking box. <laughs> exactly. I've because I've got two cats and they always get in the box and I always pick them up and you know shake them around, put some bricks in the box, throw it at the bottom of a river. <laughs> you know, just like a bit of fun. Chain the box up, handcuff them together and go, hey, Houdini. Throw it onto a busy road. I do that stuff all the time, and you can always tell there's a cat in there. Like with the- <laughs> guys, I've never handcuffed my cat. And then put it in a box and then wrap chains around the box and then throw it on a highway while yelling Houdini. All right. I did it with zip ties. Um, But there's no (laughs) way, like when you pick up the box, you just know that something is trying to stay balanced. Yeah. In the box. He probably, you know what? I think he probably was trying to get rid of the cat and that was his best bet. He thought the cat would die on the trip. Yeah, maybe. That, you know, that probably happens all the time. I'm gonna look that up. Yeah, people people put kittens in bins and shit. You're gonna you're gonna ruin your fucking day looking this up. How many cats get shipped in boxes? That's like when people take their puppy out to the woods with a ball, throw the ball, and then drive away, and then they go, "I didn't kill it. He's living. He's a wolf now. <laughs> he's living. He's living his best life in the wild." They take six puppies out, and they're like, "Oh, they're just gonna eat berries." <laughs> I'm not a monster. I could have dropped them off at the pound, but I didn't want to do the paperwork. Here's a Kira thread. Is it cruel to ship live animals through the mail? And then the first answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the proof is in the box. You don't even have to feed them. I remember, um, I, I, can't, I feel like it was like a, an episode of, um, of uh, border control or what's the airport's, airport security, that one. I think it was that or it was a news article, but some guy just like shipped some guy just shipped turtles in socks. <laughs> it was so fucked. Yeah. Like you just put a bunch of turtles in socks and then wet the socks, then put them in a box and just ship them from one country to another. And like they all died other than like two. Did we watch that together? Well, maybe. I recently, I feel like I recently watched that. It wasn't recent. It was a I think it was a I think it was like a horrific story so everyone was talking about it much less funny than the amazon cat box but that's what you come to this podcast for you know you come to this podcast for oh yeah that's a funny little one about joining a an afl like joining a team for a sport that the host doesn't even watch and tricking the producer into 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 googling very racist dog whistles um Sorry, the box Galena was was in uh-huh. was split open on one seam and that gave her air to breathe. He did this intentionally. There's no way that cat got in accidentally. What what does split open on one seam mean? Like he like one of the where where it folds, it was split. Yeah, this is sus. Mm. This is very suspect. This is like a, a boyfriend who hates his girlfriend's cat. <laughs> it Just fucking, like, like I would do that. You know? <laughs> Like the, the, un, until I repaired my relationship with my girl's cat, I'd be like, you fucking. The weather temperatures were returned. ideal and she didn't overheat or freeze. <laughs> Fuck. Shit. 
Didn't <laughs> overheat or freeze. It had two shots of getting rid of this shit cat. What an ugly cat. <laughs> Keelan's like, send it back. <laughs> they did this on purpose. Hang on. How are they going to get the cat back? They drove 10 hours Fuck to pick that. it up. Fuck that. Just put it back in the Amazon box. <laughs> it's already fine. Yeah. Clear, the, clear out the poo, remove the boots, put a cat bed in there and fucking tape the cunt up, send him back. You know, it actually would have a better chance of survival because returns take a while, but every time I order something from Amazon, it's next day. So fucking ship the cat back. I reckon. How did they get it back? They they got a rental car and they drove 10 hours to pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to drive on the way. I told you I didn't leave the door open. How the fuck did you put my cat in a box without noticing? I swear, I didn't notice. I was tired. <laughs> you know, the boots were heavy. Yeah, the boots were heavy. The boots roll around. The boots. The, <laughs> sometimes when the boots rub together, they squeak and it sounds like a meow. <laughs> no fucking way he did that accidentally. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine because before you told me that it was an inside cat, I was like, okay, maybe he put it down on the porch. It jumped in. He came back and then he taped it up because he went inside to get the tape. No fucking way. This guy had the box on the kitchen table and then taped it all up and then carried it. There's no way you could not tell there's a cat in there. I'm going to do it to both my cats as an experiment and then throw them in the river and I'll let you know. No, I wouldn't. I love my. I love one of my cats. <laughs> Which one? Uh, the lady. <clears throat> the, the, she sleeps on my chest all night. It's awesome. I have horrible hay fever all the time. <laughs> <clears throat> oh my god! I didn't. I, I. Did you not warn me about my hair before I started recording this? I look like fucking um, Rick Sanchez. What? Who do I look like? I've got like a middle part going. Um, I don't look like Rick Sanchez. I look like someone, and I'm trying to place it. I look like. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But one thing that I do know. Before, before we started, I did say you look different, but I thought it was just your face. No, it's just it's just uh, I what I what I did was I was like, oh, we're gonna do the podcast, so what I need to do is I need to do my hair. Okay. Now, normally, how I do my hair is I run water through it, and then I put product through it, okay. and then I use a comb. Uh, however, I only got one third of the way through those three steps. I just put water in it, and uh, now I'm looking at myself, and I look like uh, Albert Einstein's having a breakdown. In his in his thirties, um, but that's fine. But that's fine. Uh, and what? But here's here's a good thing about my look, is uh, is I've actually shaved and I've done a really good job. And do you know how I shaved? How did you shave? Uh, with my brand new Manscaped lawnmower five point <laughs> That's right. Now, did I lie about that just to talk about this? No. Did I genuinely forget what product I use? Yes. I love the man lawnmower. What's it called? The Manscaped. The Manscaped. Here it is. The, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra in all caps. Um, I for Okay, look. I for real, I actually love this thing. It's so good. It's so much better than the last model. And it's better than any uh, razor that I've tried. Uh, not just for my face, but also for my nuts. Uh, it's really good and it gives you a really smooth result too. I don't know. I don't know. I tried it um, not to try the razor because I've been using the razor heaps, but I tried smooth again. I don't know if I'm sold on it, but looks wise, but I will say it feels very smooth because the razor is so good. So the razor did a good job on me. I don't know if I made a good choice for my face. That's where I'm at. Um, now, uh, if you were to look at my nuts, you'd be like, great choice. You do look like when I first met you. No, that's not true at all because I have a chin <laughs> yeah, now. That's true, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about the smooth look on me, but one thing I do know is that you can use code SPEARS for 20% off your Manscaped razor. And the Manscaped 5.0 and free shipping. You're telling me that you don't have to pay for shipping? Not at all. Do you reckon you could fit a cat in this box? <laughs> maybe a small kitten. Oh, yeah, maybe. yeah, like a small, maybe, maybe like a, a, a litter of just born cats. Do they do? <laughs> do they do returns? Doesn't matter. Uh, use code Spears for twenty percent off and free shipping. The Lawnmower Five guys. If you want ad reads that are actually entertaining, you have to you have to participate and purchase the product. It's really good. 
Uh, I use it all the time. Uh, whether or not I use it correctly uh, in terms of aesthetics, I'm not so sure. I don't think I'm sold on the smooth. I think I'm going to grow it out a little bit. I keep going back and forth on it because here's the thing. I can't really grow a beard because it's not, it's not thick enough. Uh, but also I don't really want a beard because I actually have a chin. And the only reason I really had a beard was because I had no chin. Uh, but then I kind of shave it and I'm like, wow, this is so different that I can't even decide if it's a good choice or a bad choice. And then I just end up going back to growing the beard and then the cycle repeats. And every now and then I pop up like every six to eight weeks going, I'm smooth. Um, but again, the main thing to remember is use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. The I, best damn razor in the game. I have a quick story about the Manscaped 5.0. Okay, you've been using it. I keep getting in trouble for shaving my chest in the shower and not not unclogging the drain. Um. Okay, I have a, I have a few thoughts on this. Yeah. First thought is uh. Well, okay. I have I I have not only do I have a few thoughts, I also have a couple of emotions. Okay. Before we get into a, into the thoughts, can we go through the emotions? <laughs> yeah. So so. So, because obviously, you know, when you have emotions, like big, strong emotions, it can be um, easy for you to just rationalize and go into the logic, but that doesn't help you process what you're feeling. Okay. So before I go into what I think, let me tell you what I feel. So firstly, I feel pride. Oh, good. Yeah. But, but then I, then I felt strong disgust. Why is that? It's well, just chest hair. Well, I felt, let me tell you why I felt the pride because I felt the pride because, um, you used to shave your chest in the car. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so I'm proud of you that's... for not shaving your chest in the car. Thank you. And that's something that you you did a lot. Mm. You used mm. to shave everything just in the car. Yeah. I would get in the I would get in the car with you and there would be little keel in chest, neck, beard, arm hairs sometimes. Yep. Just because you'd be in traffic and you'd be like I don't really need to shave my arms, but I am in traffic. <laughs> what else am I going to do? I used to have a long commute. Yeah, and um, part of me feels like you were only doing that to encourage me to get my license, and it didn't work. Uh, so it hasn't that hasn't happened very much. So I'm proud of you for not shaving your chest in your car. Thank you. Uh, but I am disgusted that you are clogging your shower drain with your chest hair. Yeah, yeah. So well, that's a just lot what of I'm chest feeling. Hair. You you do have a lot of chest hair. Uh, I don't think I've ever I've shaved my full body, like beard, chest, nuts everything and i've never clogged the drain so for you to be able to do it with just your chest is really impressive yeah that's really i've actually i've switched off disgust i'm back on pride <laughs> that's really good and yeah. what code did you use to uh spears wow what do you get with that i got 20 off and what free else? shipping that's amazing um and so uh, where are you at with the clogging the drain with your chest here any any um well Who's winning the argument? Phoebe keeps getting upset with because me. Because typical woman. And she oh, hates. I don't, I don't like it when the shower's clogged with chest hair. And she okay? hates. We don't, we don't complain when, when you cook as food or, or like do nice things for us. So, you know. She hates the uh, the scratchy feeling my chest gives off. She doesn't like. So she, oh, so she doesn't like <laughs> when you clog the drain with your chest hair and she doesn't like how you feel after you shave your chest. What does she want you to do? Not shave your chest. <laughs> and then Phoebe's mum, because we live with her mum at the moment. Oh, so you're living with your girlfriend's mother and you're clogging her shower. How much rent do you pay? <laughs> she gets upset because I keep Sorry, clogging... Sorry, you just didn't answer that question. <laughs> I... I noticed that you just skipped over that question. Yeah, I keep clogging the sink like the... Uh, the for the record, the I would like to... Basin. just I would just like someone to write down Keelan's lack of answer. Please timestamp that. Thank you very much. <laughs> The uh, the ba like the sink basin yeah. with my facial hair. Oh, so you're clogging you're just you're just clogging everything. Yeah. So you're shaving your chest in the shower and then you're moving you clog that and you go, oh, well I can't the, the the shower's ruined. I would shave my chin in here, but the shower's clogged. My only option is to move into the sink and clog that too. Yeah. Right. And I have best intentions to clean it out. And that's and it's the thought that counts. So <laughs> I, I don't know forget. what the fuck they're complaining about. <laughs> yeah, really, typical women. That's right. That's 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 right. <laughs> it's called the Manscaped ra Razor for a reason. No, ladies, you can use it. I think there was an ad read about that a couple episodes back. Yeah. Um, right. Code Spears twenty percent off and free shipping. See, that's good because they always say in the ad copy, please tell a funny grooming story, and I never have them because I just shave and then and then I go, oh, that was the that was the task completed. <laughs> and you're like, wait till you hear about. All the drains I've clogged. <laughs> also, I shave in my car. Um, Manscaped.com, code Spears. 
dude. All right. I need to say something that I think that no one is saying. That's the truth. The Kendrick Lamar and Drake beef is boring. It sucks. Everyone's going, oh, did Drake win the beef? Or did Kendrick Lamar win the beef? Boring. It's boring. Neither of them are saying anything interesting, okay? Drake is going, oh, you've got small feet and you're short. You did a song with Taylor Swift. Kendrick's going, I hate the way you dress. You're Canadian. Oh, would one of you fucking shoot the other, please? Rap beef used to be interesting. All right? That's why I fucked your bitch, you fat motherfucker. Where's that? You got liposuction. Yeah, well, I make more money than you. Boring. Pusha T put out photos of Drake wearing blackface and exposed the sun that he wasn't raising, all right? Rap beef used to be interesting. It used to be exciting. This is just two incredibly rich guys saying that they personally don't like the other person. There's no, there's no beef. Fucking Kendrick Lamar is rapping like a prepubescent boy whose balls just dropped. I don't think that you're a very good rapper. I don't think you're black enough. Drake's out there going, oh yeah, I made two songs. You only made one. Boring. 50 Cent, when he was beefing with DJ Khaled, posted video of DJ Khaled's mother working her job on the internet, going, I know where your mother works. That's interesting. Do something interesting. It's boring. All right? Back back when rap was good, rappers would release fucking VHS tapes in stores of them stalking each other. All right, they used, back when rap was good, they used to kill each other. Where's that? (laughs) No, that's bad. They shouldn't, I'm not an advocate for violence, but I tell you what, it would make it a bit more interesting. Everyone's debating over whether or not the Kendrick track was better or the Drake track, they're both very boring. And they're both like, oh, I don't like you. Yeah, well, I don't like you either. Me and my friends don't like you. Yeah, well, you've got small feet. Yeah, well, you're from Canada, so you're not actually African-American. Would one of you fucking fight, please? Well, we know who would win that fight. But you know what? I will say this. It's It's a lot more interesting than when Australian rappers beef... Because Australian rappers, when they're in a beef, Australian rap, like the problem with it is when Australian rappers beef, Australian culture, we're we're lazy people. So Australian rappers, they don't even, they don't even go to the booth and write or record a song. They just send one of their friends to another rapper's gig. And then that rapper's friends fight the other rapper's friends in the crowd and then you have to you have to read a recap of it on a on a Facebook post by one of the fans because not even the rappers can be bothered writing about it. At least it's better than Australian rappers beefing because we're too lazy to do anything. You know? I can guarantee you that if two two Australian rappers are beefing, neither of them have $300 to pay the studio technician to record a rap about it. They'll just they'll just say they'll just say really outdated homophobic slurs about one another on their Facebook fan pages. <laughs> That's the funny thing about Australian rap beef is is you need you need to have Facebook to participate. <laughs> you know, Drake and Kendrick Lamar. It's all over every social media platform, mainly on TikTok and Twitter. Your two favorite Australian rappers start beefing. You got to download Facebook to enjoy that shit. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. It's just so, it's so, it, it also just makes no fucking sense. Like, why are Drake and Kendrick Lamar fighting? And it just comes down to two of them, you know, Drake's like, oh, I'm undeniably more, like, successful in the mainstream field. But Kendrick's like, yeah, but you can't rap as good as me. I'm a rapper. And I and I represent African American culture. And then you just look at those two opinions and you're like, yeah, you guys are both right. Like Drake's the more commercially successful guy. He makes more money and makes more hits. And Kendrick Lamar's the more like rapper, rap guy that represents the culture. Why are they fighting? It's like Eminem punching on with a composer. It's like, yeah, I, I don't understand why. Like, what are you guys fighting over? Who's like, what do you win? You know? Like when 50 Cent and Rick Ross were fighting, that was interesting. Because they were both kind of representing that gangster street culture. And then it turned out that Rick Ross was a used to be a prison officer. That's interesting. You know? I don't know. It's just very boring. It's so boring that I can't, I have nothing else to say about it. Who cares? Although I will say this. I can't stand Kendrick Lamar's music. I, it, I can't, I don't like it. I've never heard a song by Kendrick Lamar and gone, play that one again. Play that again. Play, I, that spoke to me, never. And, and, and look, before you start sounding off and go, oh, lyricism. I understand that 100% of the reason why I don't connect with Kendrick Lamar is because I'm a white guy from Australia. You know, like I can listen to his music and I can go, that would be really, really great if I came from a different culture and I understood what he, what, and I related, but can't relate. And also the fucking voices that he do, that he does are just so annoying. Walking down the street and everything. Shut up. All right. When, it, when Kendrick Lamar's busted out that fucking voice, that's when I realized that all of the, all of the voices had already been taken. Do you know what I mean? Like every rapper has an ad lib. You know, Rick Ross says, huh? That's a good one. But after that, I mean, all the noises are taken. So that's when you have other rappers just going, ah, just screaming. And it's not particularly good, but it's all that's left. You know? Kendrick Lamar can't sing. And then all of the other cool voices that you can put on while rapping have kind of been taken and almost culturally trademarked by other rappers. So we had to invent a new one and the only new types of ways of speaking is talking like you're halfway through puberty. <laughs> Shut up. Turn it off. He is a good lyricist though, but I can't get into it. I don't know. Do you like any Kendrick Lamar songs? I think we're too. I think it's I don't like rap. Right. There's one rapper I like. Who? Greeley. Right. That's but it. his music or just personally? <laughs> it's mostly just personally. Yeah. Okay. But I get yeah. around the song Big Grills. You're supporting your friend, Big <laughs> yeah, Grills. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But a rap's not my thing. Yeah. Okay. Right. I like indie coastal rock. Oh. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. If I hear this guy talk about Lime Cordial one more time. <laughs> I, I'm going to snap. <laughs> How many times have you seen that band in the last 18 months? Like Live? six times. Six times. Fuck. Every I, time in a different city. Yeah, I'm at the beach. <laughs> I'm with my friends. <laughs> Maybe we'll have a beer, but not too many. <laughs> That's every every song that they they do. And then they've got that one song with Idris Elba where he goes, I love toes. That's <laughs> yeah. a real lyric. Yeah. He, where, he, where he just he just busts out of nowhere. Firstly, weird as fuck that they're doing a song with a guy called Idris Elba. With Idris Elba. Not a guy called Idris, like the guy Idris Elba. Weird, weird connection. 
some Australian surfing band is doing a, a did they do a mixtape? They just did like an with like EP one of the together. most famous actors of all time. <clears throat> they just did an EP and and an, an EP. Sorry, an EP. Yeah. He knows. He's um, so the, the lyrics are <clears throat> and, and the next thing you know, they're both taking off clothes and their shoes. I love toes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good ad lib. See, all the good ad libs are taken. You know, Rick Ross is out there going, "Oh, uh. that's one of the best ad libs." And then he's also got a producer tape that's like Maybach music, and it's an Australian girl with a sexy Australian accent. And then, uh, what are some other ad libs? Keeler wouldn't know. I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank <laughs> now. Of there's so there's so many fucking good ad libs out there. Um, there's a guy in the UK. This is not a good ad lib, but it fuck it makes me laugh every time. There's a guy called M24. That's his name. Again, all the good rap names are taken, so he's down to fucking numbers and symbols. And he he literally goes, oh, oh. Like he just kind of, it's not the Rick Ross, oh. It's like, oh, oh. And it, fuck, it makes me laugh every time. He, he, he'll, but he'll, sometimes he'll hit it twice. He'll be like, oh, oh. <laughs> um, anyway. All the good ad libs are taken, and that's why when you do a track and you're like, "Fuck, I need to chuck a good ad lib," but all the good noises and all the good catchphrases are taken. That's why you, you just got to chuck in, "I love toes." Can you can you play "I love toes" for us, please? Just the ad lib. This is I'm not joking, by the way. This is Idris Elba. I love toes. I it's love like toes. A, um, and, and when I'm at their show and they play that song, I scream, I love toes. That's awesome. We, we, need, a, we need to go to a Lime Cordial concert with a sign that just says, I love toes. Yeah. Mate, if they're bloody two in Melbourne. And the I'm, sign is in the shape of a big toe. That's a good idea. That is a good idea. You know, and, and the, when they did the Wiggles cover, they had a children's choir. I'll get, that, I'll get it up as well. Sing that part. But they changed the lyrics because it was children singing it. They they removed the foot fetishization. Let me get it up from the song, so children could sing it. Maybe maybe the well. I wonder what they would change it to. Um, she takes off her shoes. Ten, she has ten toes. That's good. What have we got? This is gonna get the episode copyright. <laughs> they they <It's>, kept <laughs> I love toes. <laughs> that's awesome. They replaced uh, taking they're off smelling clothes. a rose. Oh my god, that's they're, so funny. They're smelling a rose. I love to lick toes. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's excellent. And that's what that's what we want. You know, remove the stuff about getting naked. Keep the very niche sexual fetish in for the ki- for the kids, for the children. I mean. Isn't that what kids shows are all about? Have a look at Nickelodeon. It's about feet. I love when artists do those like I love toes videos where they expl- they go lyric by lyric and mm. they explain it. I'd love to see Idris Elba explain that. Yeah, because so, the song's uh, about he's got an English accent, doesn't he? Yeah, so uh, well, this song it's uh it's really and also isn't it isn't like if you really listen to the lyrics, it's about cheating on his wife. Yeah, it's about it's about <laughs> it, having a threesome. As well, like it's. A, oh, a, okay. Should we go through the lyrics? Yeah, let's go through. Let's go through uh, Idris Elba's uh, verse. Let's let's pull this up. Um, what's the song called? Apple Crumble by Lime Cordial. Apple Crumble by Lime Genius. All right, let's have a look. And it's not a verse. He does the, pretty much the whole song. It's like Lime Cordial aren't even in this song. Right, they're just playing the <clears throat> instruments. Um, okay. Which, which verse is um, it? Let me, I'm looking for, uh, Mr. Got Yourself in Trouble, kissed her. Now oh, here we go. Trouble. All right. Mr. Got Yourself in Trouble. And then the ad lib, I'm in trouble now. Kissed her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Kissed her. Now you're seeing double. I'm seeing double now. <laughs> Twisted. It's all gone. Apple crumble. Apple crumble. Yeah, 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 yeah. Barney Rubble. No, they couldn't think of anything to rhyme with crumble. Why is Barney Rubble in there? Isn't that the, the drunk guy from The Simpsons? No, no it's... Oh, the it's Flintstones. A friend from What's the Flintstones. It, it's, uh, even less... 
Barney Rubble. That's oh, just wait. as actually. Isn't Barney's like Barney Gumble from The Simpsons? Barney Rubble is Flintstones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's Barney's second name in The Simpsons? Grumble. <laughs> oh, there we go. All right. So I was half. I was halfway there. Mister, got yourself in trouble. I'm in trouble now. Kissed her. Now you're seeing. Da- oh, this isn't even the fucking verse. That's the last verse that I'm reading. Yeah, you. Uh, the verse above. <clears throat> All right. Um. I'm only human. Uh, okay, this is not it. I, the- I, I saw them coming, but I didn't have the sense to make a run. Okay, okay. So he's just talking about coming. Um, I should have left. Okay, all right. I saw them coming, but I didn't have the sense to make a run. I, 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 I. <laughs> That's interesting that they would do that. Um, Stephen Hawking's machine is uh, malfunctioning. I, 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 I. Take me to the island. I should have left, but come on. I, I want to go to the, to the island and come on, babies. I should have left, but come on, baby. I was having lots of fun. You, 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 <laughs> you know I love a special, and I love it when it's two for one. Okay, it's about threesomes. Wait, wait, wait. He's cheating wait. on his wife. Now, he's cheating on his wife? That's you, what the song is about. Okay. With, on a, with a threesome. Oh, so he's left his wife at home to fuck two women. Yeah. Okay. Idris Elba's on some, on some demon shit. Uh, now, the next thing you know... They're both taking off clothes and their shoes. I love toes and I'm up to my neck in toes. I follow my nose. I don't know where it goes. So he loves stinky toes. I love toes. I follow my nose. Idris Elba loves stinky feet. Confirmed. You heard it here first. That's why we listen. That's, that's why we do the podcast guys. Um, how long have we, have we been going here? It's an absolute banger that somewhere about 45 minutes now. Right. Um, Guys, episode 350 of the podcast is coming up very soon and we're trying to figure out what we want to do for it. We've got a venue uh, in Melbourne. We want to do a live podcast. Um, previously, the podcasts have been with with guests uh, and we've always tried to have new guests. Uh, I don't know who we would get on this episode, 350. I have an idea. Idris Elba. Lime and Cordial. Two, two women that no, no, no. Uh, neither of them are his wife. Lime Cordial for an exclusive show. <coughs> uh well, how about this? Lime Cordial uh, for the seating music as the audience comes in. <laughs> okay, we play all right. Just, we play just one song oh. on repeat. Can I pick it? And it's about it's the one about toes. Uh, okay, yeah, that's fine. All right. See, and that's how you negotiate, guys. That's how you negotiate. That's how you win. That's how you get ahead in life. <laughs> um, so, episode three fifty. We want to do. Uh, we want to do a live show. What should we do? Who should we have on the show as a guest? Should we have guests at all? Um, and what do you want to see? Uh, I'll throw it to you. Comment in the comment section or use the Spotify thing and we'll take that feedback on and uh, disregard the bad suggestions and only really half listen to the good ones. But we will <laughs> read them all. Um, thank you very much for listening. Uh, that is the show. Uh, we're going to continue on on Patreon uh, right now where you get early access to every single episode. Uh, and thank you very much for supporting the show. Loosebeers.com, come see me live. Sydney shows uh, on Friday and Saturday uh, this weekend. Not cool. Come see me. The The shows are filling up and I want to see you there. Loosebeers.com, they're going to be great. Melbourne was amazing. Thank you if you attended. And I will see you next Sunday. I hope you have a shit one. Bye.